Welcome to the Grok Shop. In this video, I'll be demonstrating a Windows 10 OS and license migration. Now it might seem like I'm transferring Windows from one machine to another, but in reality, all I'm doing is I'm upgrading my motherboard and my CPU for my current installation of Windows. Before attempting the migration, I highly recommend you do a full backup. To get started there, type WinS and then type backup. Next, make sure backup settings is selected and press enter or click. Okay, now we're gonna click on go to backup and restore parentheses Windows 7. Next, click on create a system image. System image backups can take up a lot of space. It kind of just depends on how much space you've used on your hard drive. Um, for me, it's gonna be about 630 gigabytes. So I'm gonna end up putting it on my network attached storage or NAS box. If you don't have a NAS or another place where you can store all the data that you're gonna need for your backup, it might be a good time to invest in uh, external hard drive. If you happen to be in that camp, I'll put some product suggestion links for you guys below. Okay, once the backup completes, we have one more preparation step. We need to bring up the device manager. So just type WinS and type device and select device manager. What we wanna do is make sure the hard disk controller is generic to Windows and not specific to any particular chipset. To do that, we're gonna expand the IDE ATA slash ATAPI controllers. So in this area I have highlighted, if yours says standard controller or something to that effect, you're good. You don't need to do anything. If it says something like this, we need to make a change. To make the change, we're gonna right click and go to update driver. Okay, next we're gonna select the second option, browse my computer. Now we're gonna select let me pick. And finally, we can select standard SATA AHCI controller and click next. Once it's done, it'll prompt you to reboot. Don't do that. If you were to reboot, it could reverse the change you just made. Instead of rebooting, we're just gonna do a shutdown so we can begin the upgrade. Okay, so your next step will depend largely on your particular configuration. For me, I'm taking a Windows 10 drive from one box, moving it over to another box, which used to have Windows 7 on it. So here you can see my target box. Basically what I'm doing is making room for the Windows 10 drive I wanna bring over. To do that, I'm gonna move my old drive down a bit, make some space, and also make sure I have enough power and SATA connectors to make the connections to the Windows 10 drive. For this scenario, I'm gonna make sure I connect the SATA connection for the Windows 10 drive to the same SATA port on the motherboard that the old drive was connected to. If you have a new motherboard or one that you have not already been booting from, just make sure your Windows 10 drive is connected to the SATA port that you plan to boot from. So now back in my old box, I'm just gonna remove the hard drive containing the Windows 10 installation. My target box has a Xeon CPU, which has no onboard graphics. So I definitely need an external graphics card. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the graphics card from my original box and set it aside. If you need to farm any cables like SATA cables from the old box, this is a good time to do that. Depending on the condition of your target box, you may want to do some cleanup. In my case, mine was a little dusty, but wasn't really bad enough to bust out the compressed air. If the cables in your target box are getting a little bit bird's nesty, this is also a good chance to reroute some of those cables and uh, get things a little bit under control. Okay, now with all that done, I'll go ahead and swap out the video boards.
Okay, so now it's time to boot. If you need to change anything in your BIOS, this is a good time to do it. Just uh, hit delete or whatever your BIOS key is and go change it now. And hopefully, if all goes well, you'll boot up into Windows and you'll probably see a message like uh, getting devices ready or something where it's trying to find all the drivers uh, for the new motherboard. Aha, uh -huh. no wonder my mouse wasn't working. So as you can see, this method works. It's worked for me all the way back to the Windows XP days and beyond. Uh, but that's not to say that you can't have problems. I do know of people who've had problems trying this. So if it doesn't come up right, don't panic, especially if you have a backup like I showed you how to do earlier. Um, there are options and ways to get out of the bind that you find yourself in. Um, I'll have more information in the description below and also on the blog post that goes along with this. Uh, and I'll put a link to that in the description. So once you get logged in, there's still the issue of the license. So what you'll find is Microsoft puts this little nag on the screen that actually overlays on top of your apps. It comes and goes, but it's still pretty annoying sometimes. So in previous years, this process was actually a little more difficult. Recently, Microsoft's made it a little easier, especially if you have a digital license or one that you acquired for free by doing the free upgrade. So now we'll type Win S and type Activate and select Activation Settings. Next, click Change Product Key. So my scenario is my Windows 10 installation came from a Windows 8.1 installation. And on top of that, I did the free Windows 10 upgrade. So I do have a digital license, quote unquote. What that means is I'm just gonna enter my Windows 8.1 product key, even though it's an OEM key. The sticker for the Windows key, whether it's 8.1 or 10 or whatever, usually looks something like this. If it's not on your box, you might find it stamped on some of your documentation. Once you enter the key and Windows has a chance to phone home, you should find that you're activated. You'll see a little message indicating as much right under the activation area. So now the only thing left to do is to update any drivers where you feel like um, something's not working right or you know that there's a newer driver that you want to have. To get the latest drivers, of course, you just head over to your motherboard's manufacturer's website. In this case here, mine's EVGA. You need to know your model, and if you don't know your exact motherboard model, just type WinR and then put MSINFO32 in the box. Press enter, and then under Baseboard Product, you'll see your motherboard model. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If so, be sure to thumbs me up, leave me a comment, or share me. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of my future computer-related videos. But as far as transferring Windows 10 from one machine to another, that's how it's done.